Candidates are expected to have a thorough understanding of the syllabus details outlined in the accompanying figure. Energy is the ability of a body to do work. Its unit is either Newton's meter or Joan. Energy is scalar quantity, meaning that it has only magnitude. Here are different forms of energy. Kinetic energy is the energy possessed by a mass due to its movement. Its formula can be written as E k equals half of m v squared, where E k is the kinetic energy in joule. m is the mass in kilograms. v is the speed in meters per second. Gravitational potential energy is the energy stored in a mass due to its position in a gravitational field. Its formula can be written as E p equals m g delta h, where E p is the gravitational potential energy in joule. M is the mass in kilograms. G is the acceleration due to gravity equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Delta H is the change in height in meters. Mechanical energy is the sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy of a system. Elastic potential energy is the energy stored in an object due to a changes in its shape. Chemical potential energy is the energy stored within the chemical bonds between atoms or molecules. Electrical potential energy is the energy stored in the charges under an electrical field. Nuclear energy is the energy stored in the nucleus. Thermal, or heat, energy, also known as internal energy, is the energy refers to the energy contained within a system that is responsible for its temperature. Light is the radiant energy and is an electromagnetic radiation. Sound is the energy transferred through the vibration of the particles in matter. Work done is the product of force and distance moved in the direction of the force. Its unit is either Newton's meter or joules. Work is the scalar quantity, which has only magnitude. The equation for work done can be written as W equals F multiply by D, where W represents the work done in joules. F is force in newtons, and D is the distance moved in the direction of force in meters. For example, a force of 5 newtons acts on a box, causing it moves in the direction of force for a distance of 10 meters. Therefore, work done is 5 times 10 is equal to 50 joules. On the other, if a force of 5 newtons acts in the opposite direction of the distance moved, which is negative direction. Therefore, work done is minus 5 times 10 equals minus 50 joules. When the person is walking of 10 meters and holding the box with weight of 10 newtons. A person walks 10 meters while holding a box weighing 10 newtons, the person exerts a force of 10 newtons to hold the box but the box moves forward in a direction perpendicular to the force. Therefore, the work done by the person holding the box is zero. In another scenario, if a person with a weight of 600 newtons walks up a stairs with a height of 5 meters and a horizontal length of 6 meters. Therefore, the work done by the person is 600 times 5 is equal to 3000 joules. This is because the weight of the person and the height of the site of the stairs are parallel. In a case of a package with weight of W moving along a conveyor belt driven by a motor as shown. Therefore, the work done on the package is W times H. This is because the weight of the package is parallel to the height H. A 300 newtons force is applied to a box to move it up a ramp as shown. Therefore, the work is done by the force when moving the box from x to y is 300 times 5 is equal to 1500 joules. This is because the force of 300 newtons is parallel to 5 meters. Work done and the energy principle state that mechanical or electrical work done is equal to the energy transferred. We can express this relationship with the equation. W equals F D equals delta E. 
where W represents the work done in joules. F represents the force in newtons. D represents the distance moved in meters. Delta E represents the energy transferred. For example, let's consider a mass of 5 kilograms with an initial speed 2 meters per second. It is continuously exerted to a force of 10 newtons for 5 meters on a smooth surface. We need to find the final speed, V, at 5 meters. The work done by the force of 10 newtons is transferred to the kinetic energy, without any thermal losses due to friction since the surface is smooth. Therefore, the work done is the equal to the increase in kinetic energy. The work done by the force of 10 newtons is 10 times 5. The increase in kinetic energy is half of 5 times v squared minus half of 5 times 2 squared. Solving these equations, we find that the final speed, v, is 4.9 meters per second. In another scenario, let's the same box with an initial speed of 2 meters per second. It is exerted to a force of 10 newtons along a rough surface for a distance of d meters. As a result, 5 joules of thermal energy is lost, and the final speed is 5 meters per second. We need to find the distance moved by the box. The work done by the force of 10 newtons is transferred to both kinetic energy and thermal energy. So, we have the equation. 10 times d equals half of 5 times 5 squared, minus half of 5 times 2 squared plus 5. Solving this equation, we find that the distance moved, d, by the box is 5.75 meters. In another scenario, let's consider a box with a mass of 5 kilograms being lifted from the ground to a higher level with a height of 3 meters. The weight of the box is 5 times 9.8 is equal to 49 newtons. The work done by the weight of the box is given by its weight multiplied by the height. Its result is 49 times 3 is equal to 147 joules. The gravitational potential energy increases by m g h equals 5 times 9.8 times 3. Its results is 147 joules. Therefore, the work done by the weight of the box is equal to the increasing in gravitational potential energy. The principle of the conservation of energy states that the energy cannot be created and destroyed, but can only be transferred from one form to another. For example, let's consider a mass of 1.5 kilograms that is dropped from rest to the ground from a height of 5 meters, neglecting air resistance. At the initial position, the mass has zero kinetic energy due to its zero speed, while gravitational potential energy is maximized at the greatest height. The maximum gravitational potential energy is m g h equals 1.5 times 9.8 times 5 is equal to 73.5 joules. The total mechanical energy of the system is the sum of its kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy, which in this case is 73.5 joules. It remains constant at any positions. As the mass moves downward, its height decreases leading to a decrease in gravitational potential energy. This gravitational potential energy transfers into kinetic energy, causing the speed to increase. When the mass reaches the ground with a speed, v, its gravitational potential energy becomes zero since the height is zero. At this point, all gravitational potential energy have been transferred to kinetic energy. To find the speed, v, to at which it reaches the ground, we can apply the principle of conservation of energy. The decrease in gravitational potential energy is equal to the increase in kinetic energy. Using the equation m g h equals half of m time v squared. We can rearrange it to v equals square root of 2 g h. Substituting the values in g equals 9.8 and h equals 5. Solving this equation, the speed, v, equals 9.9 .9 meters per second. If air resistance is present, the speed, v, at which it reaches the ground will be less than 9.9 .9 meters per second, 
because some energy is lost to thermal energy due to air resistance. In another scenario, let's the same mass being thrown upward through the air with an initial speed 10 meters per second. At the initial position, the mass has zero gravitational potential energy due to its zero height from the ground. While kinetic energy is maximized at the greatest speed, the maximum kinetic energy is half of 1.5 times 10 squared equals 75 joules. As the mass moves upward, its speed decreases, leading to a decrease in kinetic energy. This kinetic energy is transferred to gravitational potential energy and thermal energy due to air resistance. When the mass reaches the maximum height, its speed is zero, so its kinetic energy is zero. At this point, all of the kinetic energy is transferred to gravitational potential energy and thermal energy due to air resistance. To find the maximum height that the mass reaches, we can apply the principle of conservation of energy, assuming a thermal energy loss of 15 joules due to air resistance. The decrease in kinetic energy is equal to the increase in both gravitational potential energy and thermal energy. Using the equation, half of m times v squared equals m g h plus thermal energy lost. We can substitute the values in m equals 1.5, v equals 10, g equals 9.8 and thermal energy lost equals 15. Solving this equation, we find that the height, h, equals 4.1 meters. If air resistance is ignored, the height at which it reaches from the ground will be greater than 4.1 meters, because there will be no thermal energy lost due to air resistance. In another scenario, let's consider a pendulum with a mass of 0.6 kilograms being oscillated at rest from A to point B, and then to point C, neglecting air resistance. The total mechanical energy of the system remains constant at any position due to the principal conservation of energy. At point A, the initial kinetic energy is zero due to zero speed, while the gravitational potential energy is maximized. As the pendulum swings from point A to point B, its height decreases, resulting in a decrease in gravitational potential energy. This gravitational potential energy is transferred to kinetic energy, causing an increase in speed. At point B, the kinetic energy and speed is maximized due to greatest speed. While the gravitational potential energy is minimized due to the lowest point of the swing. As the pendulum swings from point B to point C, its speed decreases from the maximum to zero, leading to a decrease in kinetic energy to zero. This kinetic energy is transferred to gravitational potential energy. To find the maximum speed, v, that the mass reaches at the point b, we can apply the principle of conservation of energy. And assuming a decrease in height from point a to point b of 0.1 meters. The decrease in gravitational potential energy is equal to the increase in kinetic energy. Using the equation, m g h equals half of m times v squared. We can substitute the values in m equals 0.6, g equals 9.8, and h equals 0.1. Solving this equation, we find that the speed, v, equals 1.4 meters per second. If air resistance is present, the speed at which it reaches the point b will be less than 1.4 meters per second, because some energy is lost to thermal energy due to air resistance. In another scenario, Let's consider a ball with a mass of 1.5 kilograms rolling downward at rest from a height of 2 meters to a height of 0.5 meters along the given path as shown. We assume there are thermal energy losses due to friction of 5 joules at the final speed v. To find the final speed v, we can apply the principle of conservation of energy. The decrease in gravitational potential energy is equal to the increase in both kinetic energy and thermal energy. Using the equation, m g h equals half of m times v squared plus thermal energy lost. We can substitute the values in m equals 1.5, g equals 9.8, h equals 2, minus 0.5, and thermal energy lost equals 5. 
Solving this equation, we find that the speed, v, equals 4.8 meters per second. If air resistance and friction is ignored, the speed, v, will be greater than 4.8 meters per second, because there will be no thermal energy lost due to air resistance. Power. Power is defined as the work done, or energy transferred per unit time. Its unit is measured in joules per second, or what, W. Power is the scalar quantity, representing only magnitude. The equation of power can be expressed as P equals W divided by T, or E divided by T. Where P is the power in watts. W is the work done in joules. T is the time in seconds. And E is the energy in joules. Experiment to investigate your power output. First, measure your mass using a scale balance. And then multiply by gravity to get your weight in newtons. Second, measure the height of one step of the stairs in meters. Third, count the number of steps. So, the total height of stairs equals n d meters. Fourth, time how long to climb the stairs is seconds using a stopwatch. Work done climbing the stairs equals force times distance. Force is your weight and distance is the height of stairs. So, work done is W times N times D. Power equals work done over time taken. So, power is W, N, T, over T. Conservation of energy. The principle of the conservation of energy states that the energy cannot be created and destroyed, but can only be transferred from one form to another. Efficiency is defined as the ratio of the useful energy, or work or power output from the system to its total energy, or work or power input. Efficiency can be expressed as the decimal, fraction or percentage. Here are the efficiency value for different devices or bodies. Light bulb. The electrical energy input is 120 joules. The useful output energy is light of 50 joules. And the waste output energy is thermal of 70 joules. Therefore, the efficiency of light bulb is 50 divided by 120 is equal to 0.417, or 41.7%. Television. The electrical energy input is 550 joules. The useful output energy consists of 220 joules for light. And 250 joules for sound. The waste output energy of 80 joules for thermal. Therefore, the efficiency of television is 470 divided by 550 is equal to 0.855 equals 85.5%. Electric motor. The electrical energy input is 750 joules. The useful output energy is 450 joules for kinetic energy. The waste output energy consists of 200 joules for sound and 100 joules for thermal energy. Therefore, the efficiency of electric motor is 450 divided by 750 is equal to 0.6 equals 60%. Running person. The chemical potential energy input is 800 joules. The useful output energy is 500 joules for kinetic energy. The waste output energy is 300 joules for thermal energy. Therefore, the efficiency is 500 divided by 800 is equal to 0.625, or 62.5%. Sankey diagrams can be used to represent energy transfers. These diagrams are characterized by the splitting arrows that show the proportions of the energy transfers taking place. The different parts of the arrow in a Sankey diagram represent the different energy transfers. The width of each arrow is proportional to the amount of energy being transferred. The left-hand side of the arrow represents the energy transferred into the system. The straight arrow pointing to the right represents the useful energy output. The arrow that bend away represents the wasted energy. This is a result of the conversation of energy. 
where the total energy input is equal to the total energy output, which is the sum of the useful energy output and wasted energy output. Therefore, the length of L1 equals L2 plus L3 plus L4. For example, let's draw a Sankey diagram for the electric motor with the electrical energy input is 1000 joules. The energy output as kinetic energy of 600 joules, thermal energy of 300 joules, and sound energy of 100 joules. We will set up the scale where one division represents 100 joules. The width of the energy input arrow will be 10 divisions, equivalent to 1000 joules. The width of the straight arrow pointing to right, representing the useful energy output for kinetic energy, will be 6 divisions, equivalent to 600 joules. The width of the arrow that bend away, representing the thermal energy, will be 3 divisions, equivalent to 300 joules. The width of the arrow that bend away, representing the sound energy, will be 1 division, equivalent to 100 joules. To calculate the efficiency of the motor, we divide 600 by 1000 equals 0.6, or 60% efficiency. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would be grateful if you would subscribe, share, like and leave a positive comment. Your support will encourage me to create more content. Thank you.